let's begin then and start by just uh, taking a step back, Stay taking a step out, taking a step out of the world. Taking a step in, into yourself, into the present moment. Taking a step in to right now. Taking a step into your own body and mind. And allowing yourself to just relax. Allowing yourself to breathe. Allowing yourself to feel.
Feeling your body. Feeling your thoughts and emotions. Allowing yourself to unwind. So sometimes it is easier to have metta for other people, metta for people we don't know, more than it is to have metta for the for ourselves. than it is sometimes to have metta for the people who we are closest to. So uh, um, there'll be some instruction, but just follow them if they are beneficial for you. If not, just use this time to practice in a way that is best for you, allows you to open your heart, allows you to let the energy flow through your body and 
be at ease. Be at ease in the world. So if it is helpful for you, bring up to mind someone or some people, animals, beings who we don't necessarily know, but who are like us in that They are fellow human beings, fellow beings that feel pain. So perhaps they could be prisoners, refugees, Animals being led to the slaughter. People in times of war living with the fear of imminent death of their families being hurt, their homes being destroyed. But not to dwell on their suffering, but to Reach out and hold them. Wishing that they feel safe. Sharing our own fortune with them, our own well being with them. our own way, caring, 
and tending. So the pain and discomfort that must be in their hearts. Uh, oh, compassion is not about dwelling on the or getting lost in the suffering of others, but instead we notice our wish to care. that love for the well-being of others. Where we let go of our own needs or our own, our own world and reach out Reach out because we are strong. And we can hold. Hold another person's pain.
your mind wanders away, just bringing it back. To that emotion, that sense of caring, Oh, might to keep that um, emotion alive. Just to bring up the person or what people again. image and how we respond. we continue with the meditation and just keep this emotion alive and perhaps could change the object of our our well-wishing Change it to people who we do know. Perhaps our colleagues, people who we don't know that well, but people who we associate with. 
our neighbors, people in our town, people who we see down the streets, and know that they too, they too have difficulties. They might be having families that are broken, difficulties at work, not having a job. In just the same way, we reach out and extend a hand A hand saying, I know, I understand. Bringing them close to our heart. Allowing them to be held, to feel heard. trying to get on in life, just like us. Seemingly okay, but there's always something there. Bringing these people to mind. Reaching out and making friends. Letting them know that it's going to be all right.
then we bring to mind people a little closer to us. Our families, our friends, annoying people, people in our lives. And just like all those people we didn't know who suffered and struggled, the people close to us also suffer and struggle in ways that we don't quite know, ways that aren't obvious. We draw them close. We accept them as they are. We say it's going to be all right. Draw them into our field of well-being. Finally, we come back to ourselves. Knowing that we also hurt. We also suffer.
because we are also human. We also feel pain. We also feel hurt. And that's okay. We give ourselves a hug. And say, it's okay. It's okay the way things are. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to feel vulnerable. It's okay, just the way you are. We slowly come to the end of the meditation. And before we finish, we'll just step back and see what happened in the last hour. What happened to our minds? 
Where did, how did we react to it? How did we, what did we learn? How did it change? Where did we get stuck? What was helpful? Coming back to this room. Coming back to this space. And when you're ready, And slowly open your eyes. Okay, so um, well, I hope that was <laughs> interesting for you, good for you, and um, the. Coming out of meditation, it works for some people. This is something that works for me. Um, Kim had an interesting comment. I got painfully caught up in the causes of people's suffering. Yeah. Yeah. This is, is what I used to do for, this is, okay, on to questions and answers. <laughs> before we wind up. Um, uh, yes, so, yeah, so then it's not a good practice. It's not a good way to, to, um, uh, uh, to, to sort of focus your mind. Because, um, yeah, if it is getting you caught up in the causes of people's suffering, that's not the purpose of the meditation. The purpose of the meditation is to, to bring up that sense of well-being, you know. It's not getting drowned in their suffering, but helping them to come out. You're helping, you know, you're, you're, you're lifting someone up, not sinking down with them. So you then you have to approach the meditation in a different way in something that lifts you up and lifts them up. So I hope, yeah, this, this, is, this is something that used to happen to me as well. I actually realized I enjoyed drowning in other people's suffering. 
<laughs> it kind of made me come out of my own head. And in a way, that's part of the process. But I realized that was not... Um, when I looked at people who were truly compassionate, say, you know, Ajahn Brahm, Dalai Lama, they were not miserable. You know, they were not drowning. They, they, there was something very, uh, 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 very at ease and at peace in their minds. So then I realized, hmm, you know, I'm going down the wrong track. It's that sense of well-being. There's um, uh, um, um, what is it? Matthew Ricard. Matthew Ricard talks about this empathetic distress. If that, if you've heard that term, um, empathetic distress that is is not what what compassion is, and um, it's the it's 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 probably I don't know if it's a, a near enemy, but um, he talked about uh, a test that I think he was. You know how they put all these things on people's heads and what what lights up is what their happy zones and their sad zones and all the rest of it. And um, anyway, this this uh, 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 what do you call anyway test that was done on him. He was he was asked to asked to asked to reflect in two ways. So the first one, he was shown a picture of children in Auschwitz. Pe children in, you know, were going to, in obviously a great amount of distress. And they measured you, the parts of his brain that lit up. And it was all the distress, all the distress signs, all the unhappy signs. And so that was take one. Take two, they asked him to instead now practice, practice his meditation, practice compassion or, you know, uh, metta, whatever it is, you know, the, 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 what he practiced as metta meditation or compassion meditation. And when he did that, all the happy sides of his brain lit up. So it was a pleasant, it was a joyful thing to practice metta meditation. It was not something that brought up all the sort of miserable sides of his brain. So, um, yeah, the actual practice of um, compassion, it's a joyful practice. It's not someone that helps, that makes us drown. But of course, in the process, you have to feel the suffering of others. But that's that's not the point to sort of drown with them. I, I I hope that helps because this is something that I have battled with, and uh, kind of realized, hmm, this is not this is not it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that question. Um, okay. Um, so, thank you for the gentle space and please chant a blessing okay thank you richard thank you thank you for the gentleness in a great strength richard and glory says i love ajahn brahm said that helping people with the road to come up instead of sinking with their suffering exactly exactly he has this he has this uh, he said um you know you see someone at the bottom of the well and you have to go down that well to meet them. But you have a lifeline for both of you to come out again. Not that you sit down in the well with them and you're both at the bottom of the well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Then I expected a great effortless joy and then a still contentment in the body and mind. Coming out, tears started coming. How do I bring this into the rest of the day? I could have stayed in the contentment forever, but I'm working today. <laughs> ah, that's a struggle we all have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we get better. I, um, we just have to find our own tricks, you know. 
of how to carry this into the day. I, I have the same thing, you know, oh, it was so nice meditating, but oh my God, now <laughs> there's the rest of the world. Oh God, it's all gone. <laughs> So this is part of this is part of the practice, and we have to find our own way how to um, bridge that gap, how to bring one into the other and the other into one, you know, uh, and and that is important. Or else we we would all be happily living in a forest tucked away, in a, <laughs> picking berries and having nothing to do with anybody else. That would be a nice way to live, but alas, not. <laughs> yeah, so we have to learn how to bridge that gap. I, I can't, um, you know, tell you how to. We have to work it out ourselves, but we have to do it. Yeah. Maybe through metta. Maybe through metta. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, maybe through Metta. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we will come to an end there. And, uh, oh, Richard has an interesting Kevin. I found being aware of the body more helps with daily mindfulness. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Yeah, anybody else has any comments, please? Uh, we have come to 10 o'clock, so we should in theory should be finishing up but uh, um, yeah we all have our ways of uh, bringing our meditation into into the world please you're welcome to say something or type something okay we'll stop there <laughs> All right. Um Manori. Ah, oh, this guy. Uh, Manori will end up. There's lots of interesting comments through comments coming through. I often just check with my heart, see whether it's opened or closed. Yeah. Yeah, it's like this. This. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. And present moment check-in. We're not somewhere in our heads. Yes. So just so to wrap up, um, thank you very much, Venerable, for the lovely meditation session. And uh, it's not not the usual way, but it was so <laughs> nice. And uh, you guided very nicely. And at the end, it was so useful when you say to reflect back the meditation as well. And thank you all of us making this community and all of you and uh, so without you there won't be this community there won't be these Anukampa so thank you very much for being with Anukampa and being part of Anukampa and um, as usual all these things are you know done by Anukampa free of charge all the regular teachings and if you are able please donate because um uh, the finances are needed to run this kind of organization. And another reminder that Ajahn Pramali is coming next week, and uh, there may be still uh, places if you know if you if you are interested in if you know people who are interested in. So please check our events page and have a look. Thank you. And I have oh. put the link of the nation earlier in the chat right 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 okay well thank you everybody for being here and nice to see everyone again um yeah and uh, hopefully see you at one of Ajahn Ramadi's events next week in London or Oxford or online <laughs> although I don't think it's going to be online so well, never mind that <laughs> And Brighton. Brighton, Brighton and Bristol, yes. Okay. Yes, it's not going to be online, so sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so you can unmute and wave goodbye.
Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.